Dear all, today I would like to talk with you about equine welfare. My name is Mieke Teunissen and I'm the secretary of the Sectoraat Paarden, the Dutch council where uh, sport, uh, breeding and entrepreneurship are working together for the horse industry. Equine welfare. Today I would like to talk with you about the changing view in the de definition on equine welfare, how our society is changing, and also what the job for you is to do to improve equine welfare in uh, your daily business. But first, um, on equine welfare. It's already a long time that we work together with our horses in sports, in competitions, on events, in traditions. For some of us, it's a way how we make income, how we make a living. For others, it's a, a form of being active in sports or other ways. Um, our society is changing and moreover, they would like to have um, uh, a view on how we, what we are doing with our horses and how we work together with them. Um, and it's not new that we as a horse sector are making changes in how we deal with our horses. We have new insights where we see that things are going more easy or going better, but we also have scientific research which is helping us to give us new insights in how we can do as much uh, as best for our horses in their well-being. On the definition of horse welfare, we also see a change. In 1965, we started with the five freedoms of Bramble, where we have um, uh, the freedoms of from uh, hunger and thirst, the freedom from discomfort, the freedom from pain, injury or disease, and the freedom from fear and distress, and last but not least, the freedom to express normal behavior. What you see is that the first freedoms, the first four freedoms, are really going about the negative impact on, uh, uh, on horses. So uh, we don't want to see them with hunger, we don't want to see them with discomfort. But the last uh, freedom, the fifth one, to express normal behavior, is actually the freedom which is getting more and more in of interest for the public. How can normal behavior be shown by horses in their daily life? And we see that shifting also in the definition coming up. In 1994, the five domain model came. And the five domain model also gives um, the, uh, uh, a space for the mental state of horses. So how do they experience the environment in which they are kept? Think about uh, the housing situation, how we feed horses, but also uh, how they are able to interact with each other. And it's, um, the stable may, may be as nice as possible, um, but it's really about how the horse experiences that stable. Uh, how does the horse experience the food which is giving him? So that's about the five domain model. And recently, in 2021, our Dutch uh, uh, board, uh, which is advising our Ministry of Agriculture, came with uh, a new definition on animal welfare, and they came with animal dignity. And animal dignity is um, talking about six guiding principles. And the first guiding principle is really the principle which is making the difference in the new definition. Uh, the first prin the guiding principle says that we have to recognize that there is an intrinsic value and an integrity of the animal itself. So that says that the horse is able um, uh, in, in um, making a difference or making um, uh, experience a situation in which it is positive or negative. And the horse is able to change that experience, that it's able to go from one situation to a new situation um, and is deciding itself in which situation the horse prefers to be. Furthermore, the six guiding principles still talk about good nutrition, good environment, good health and the natural behavior part. And they also added the positive emotional state the horse uh, should be able in to get. As we go to um, the changing view from public, also our society has a changing view on what animal welfare is. And that view um, that shows two um, uh, ways in how we look to using animals. There's one part of the society which looks 
to animals and using them as a situation which should, shouldn't be allowed. We shouldn't allow the, uh, the Dutch equine industry or the equine industry as itself that horses are used uh, by humans. Uh, luckily, uh, the bigger part of our society has a different view on how we are going to deal with horses and animals in our society. It's allowed to use those horses, but um, we have to make sure that uh, the horse, um, uh, that it's done in a way that the horse can experience that positive emotional state. And as a sector, we should uh, question ourselves for the public, are we trustworthy? Are we not only talking about positive welfare and positive well-being for horses, but also are we really keeping ourselves to that? And how are we uh, sure and how can the public be sure that we're doing the best for our horses as we would like to do that? And therefore, we should ask ourselves questions. And then I come to this, the last point I would like to, give, to talk to you, with you about. What can you do yourself? And the biggest thing is start, ask, start asking yourself the question, uh, is what we're doing the way we should do the things with horses? Um, ask questions about, we're going with two and a half year horses to first viewings, for instance. We have heavy music at different events and shows with horses. We have, uh, might have days in the year where it's really hot and warm, um, and should we have our breeding days uh, at, uh, organized at, uh, that kind, on that, under that kind of circumstances? Um, challenging situation for horses, um, and we cannot avoid them. Every new situation for a horse will be challenging. And it's our job, it's your job as a horse owner, that you um, um, learn your horse how the horse can um, um, uh, adapt itself to the situation. So um, the horse might experience stress, stress the first time, but with the right preparation and with the right um, 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 uh, management around the horse, the horse is able to shift from a state where it might experience something negative to a situation where it's positive for itself. My end for this presentation to you is, it's not my message to bring to you that everything about horse welfare is going wrong. Definitely not. But my question to you all is, please put yourself in your horse's shoe and look at it if the horse is possible to experience that positive mental state of happiness. Thank you for watching.